Hi, welcome to the next of our series, Practical Electromagnetics for Engineers. We're going to work more with Coulomb's Law and expand it to define something called the potential, which is really the potential energy of a charge. And let's see how that works. So our electric field defined by Coulomb's Law is given by this. This is the, the more complicated form of this and um, it works in three dimensions. I generally draw in two, but let's go ahead and get rid of the y-axis. It only work in one dimension to, to illustrate this idea of the potential energy that a charge has in an electric field. Um, if we just think about one dimension, we can simplify Coulomb's law to this expression right here because we only have things going along the x-axis. Uh, we also know another component of Coulomb's law is the force and again we can, can simplify this general expression over to a force along the x-axis of two charges that look like that. So, so let's put a charge right here. Um, we'll call this basically position zero um, and we'll call this charge Q sub A and we want to know what happens um, if we bring another charge Q sub B and move it toward charge Q sub A. Well, well that's pretty obvious. We know that, that charge Q sub A is going to create an invisible field of force rays, a vector field we call the electric field. It points all along here and these vectors get shorter and shorter as the square of the distance as we get further away from the charge. So essentially what happens is this is kind of like compressing a spring or, or pushing a big rock up a hill like Sisyphus. As we bring this charge QB closer and closer and closer. We have to push harder and harder and harder as the inverse square of the position of x right here because we've got that inverse square in the denominator. Um, so way out at, at x equals a very big number, let's call it infinity, uh, we know the force on this charge is zero. So, so this QB, if it's way out here somewhere, um, has no energy associated, has no potential energy. But as we bring it closer and closer and closer and move it in toward QA, the force increases and increases and increases as the inverse square of that distance. Um, this is pretty obvious what would happen if we let go of this charge. It would go flying off and go zooming out along the x-axis because of the, all of the potential energy we gave it. And now this is a physics problem. We're storing potential energy in charges. When we let them go, that potential energy turns to kinetic energy as the charge accelerates away. And all that energy has to balance. We have conservation of energy. We never, ever violate that. So essentially what this shows is that Coulomb's law and charges behave the same way that mechanical springs do or flywheels or any other device for storing energy. If you bring two charges together that are the same charge, you have to push them together and it takes energy to do that. We, we typically call it work in physics. And, and we know the potential energy is essentially going to be given by, by this integral right here, which isn't a scary thing at all. It just says, um, as we move along the x-axis, piece by piece, by piece, by piece, with each of these little pieces being dx. Um, the overall energy sums as the charge we're pushing, the charge that's creating the electric field, that's q sub a, uh, this 4 pi epsilon, uh, which we've talked about already, and essentially goes as the, the um, inverse square of the distance away from the charge x. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, well, this, this happens to be a pretty easy integral to solve um, because we just say x is equal to negative 2 and we've got um, basically defined integral here and we know that the value is 0 at infinity and when we go ahead and solve that we find the potential uh, due to charge A is given by this expression right here. Now, you may wonder where QB disappeared to. Essentially what happened here is I don't really care about QB. Um, I want to set QB equal to 1 so I can calculate the potential energy from this charge Q sub A no matter what charge I bring up to. So, so the way you have to think about this is the overall potential energy stored in two charges some distance apart um, is the, the value of the charge you're bringing close. In that case, in this case it would be Q sub B uh, multiplied by the voltage. And because that's what we call this potential energy of an electric field. We call it a voltage. And we use the term V for it. So, so essentially charges create um, voltage fields around them. And, and what do these voltage fields look like? Um, well, they look um, 
in two or three dimensions, um, very similar to what we calculated in one dimension. Here we have the expression for an electric field created by a charge and the, the potential energy field, the voltage created by this charge is given by this expression. You see it's really exactly the same thing except in, instead of having a square dependence we have um, basically just the magnitude of the distance. There are a couple other differences between these expressions as well. This essentially creates a vector field because it maps a vector e to every point in space given by r sub m which is the point we're measuring that at. Um, this, the voltage or potential energy related to electric fields creates what's called a scalar field and remember a scalar is just a number and we use that term to distinguish it from vectors. Um, the scalar field essentially maps a number to every point in space rather than a vector. What does this scalar look like for a point charge if we plot this out? It looks something like this, and I used this uh, couple of lines of MATLAB script to create this image. It's very easy to do. Essentially what you have is I'm plotting on the x and the y axis here. I've put my charge at the point x equals zero and y equals zero, and the vertical axis is not space. This is actually the potential v of x comma y. So I'm plotting the height as the value of the potential and I'm also using this color bar um, to give the value of the potential as well. So what do we see? We see essentially in the two dimensions we've mapped a value to every point in space. The value is given by the height and as you'd expect the potential energy gets really really high as you approach the charge because those electric fields get really big as the inverse square. As you go out the potential drops off very very rapidly down there. Another nice thing about potential, just like electric field, is the principle of superposition holds for potential as well. So if you have multiple charges, all you have to do is to sum the charges up. So here I've done exactly the same MATLAB script, but I've repeated it three times. And instead of putting the charges just at the origin, I've put them at different locations in space. And you can see the overall potential field is just the sum of the, the potentials of all those charges. If you had ten charges, you'd do exactly the same thing. So things are relatively straightforward in this case. And so if you have discrete charges, we can create something called potential. The potential, right, is the potential energy of a charge in an electric field. So a, a charge creates potential, and any other charge that moves close to that charge has a potential energy given, and so let's write our energy, equal to the potential, which we call the voltage, multiplied by the value of the charge. So if we had three charges here, let's call them Q1, Q2, and Q3. They all together create a potential field. And if we moved any other charge, let's call it Q sub 4, around here, the potential energy would be determined by both the value of Q4 times the value of the potential field. So the energy of charge 4, just to be clear, is equal to the voltage from charges 1 to 3 multiplied by the charge Q4. Pretty straightforward.